these hard to find an album in Slipknot's discography that caused more controversy and splits than All Hope Is Gone, the band's fourth album released back in 2008. Today this album can be called rather infamous, despite the commercial success and hundreds of millions of views of videos on YouTube, many fans do not like it, some of them even consider I the worst album of the group. And all would be fine, but this is also the last album of the group in the golden composition in 2010 Paul dies of an overdose, and in 2013 Joey is thrown out of the group. As history has shown. Paul's death was the trigger for the slow disintegration of the group's golden lineup, following Joey's firing Chris in 2019. Who will be next? Who knows? Anyway, one would think that over time, the passions around Ahig will subside and fans will accept him, but it turned out rather the other way around. Over the years, Slipknot got a lot of younger fans and they had less desire to delve into the subject than those who saw the release of the album. By the way, I myself bought the extended version of this album on the day it was released, and whoever said what. I immediately decided that this was their best album, and I still think so. Moreover, I think this is the last good Slipknot album, and the next two are just a shame on the former name. In any case, being the most controversial album in the history of the group. There are many interesting facts associated with Ahig. And I still think so. Moreover, I think this is the last good Slipknot album, and the next two are just a shame on the former name. In any case, being the most controversial album in the history of the group. There are many interesting facts associated with Ahig. And I still think so. Moreover, I think this is the last good Slipknot album, and the next two are just a shame on the former name. In any case, being the most controversial album in the history of the group, there are many interesting facts associated with Ahig. I'll start with the most interesting fact, the band had a lot of material left overboard and the possibility of a second All Hope Is Gone release was raised several times, with all this unknown material. When this will happen and whether it will happen at all is absolutely not clear, but the prospect itself is fascinating. When it became known that the new album was going to be, the band advertised it as the heaviest album in Slipknot history, that it would take your face off, seriously. Corey used to say that phrase all the time, that it would be darker than Io and Val. 3. The Subliminal Verses Ironically, Today Ahig is known more as the album with the most easy songs. At the same time, it cannot be said that the group did not keep its promise, there was a lot of tin on the subject. Some of which was often more brutal than their former work. Jim later commented on the album, there were our lightest and heaviest songs. Unlike previous albums, Ahig was recorded far out of town. According to the group, this had a positive effect on the album, and one cannot but pay attention to the most beautiful booklet for the album, a bunch of photos, nature, abandoned buildings, handwritten font. In my opinion it also left a strong imprint on the atmosphere of the album. In addition to the more standard lyrics for Slipknot, I had brought back the criticism of the music industry and became the first album with anti-political lyrics. Ahig has been linked to depression in two band members, Corey and Joey. Corey started to feel a particular depression during his Stone Sour tour with Korn. It was during the tour that he began writing the lyrics for the new Slipknot album. Corey invested the most in some of the songs, for example. Dead Memories is mainly his work. And he not only wrote Snuff completely himself, but even recorded her acoustic guitar parts. In turn, the song Sulfur was written by Joey and Jim in one evening. Joey became depressed between recording and mixing the album. It seems that the reason for this was an unsuccessful relationship with the then girl. Everything came to the point that he brought himself to a pulp, until his father knocked down the door to his house and pulled it out. The process of composing and recording Ahig was rather strange, in fact, the group had never been together in the studio together, some came, others left, some were more often and longer than others, others were very rare guests. In addition, Paul and Joey already have demos of a large number of songs on their hands before entering the studio. For example, before recording Val. 3. The subliminal versus Paul and Joey had 16, 18 demo songs on their hands, 
While they only had five, six songs for Ahig, this meant that a lot had to be written in the studio, because they were running out of dates for concerts. Also, without looking at the rest of the band, Joey recorded all the drum parts for all the songs on the album, leaving the others to record their parts on top of the finished drum tracks. Oddly enough, despite all the difficulties, there were some problems with the producer of that album, Dave Fortman. Jim speaks of him openly negatively. The clown tells the story of how he once turned on his demos of nine songs in the car, to which Dave said that four of them are complete shit. And although Clown is very pleased with the sound of the album that Dave put on, he is upset that some of the material didn't make it to the album, while some less successful songs did. Joey in turn spoke positively about the producer. Some fans scold Ahig for being too experimental, but it looks like the most experimental is left behind. At one point, Clown, Jim and Corey formed their own band and began writing more experimental and underground music. It is known that this included recording of Croaking Frogs Live, as well as recording Corey's vocals at the bottom of the well. All this was rejected by the rest of the group. In addition, Jim began to independently write his own announcement net music. One of those songs even ended up on the album as a bonus track, Edel We Die. Corey wanted to use at least 15 vocal types on the album. The final version of the album clearly won't have much, but Ahig is clearly the album with the widest range of vocals. Ahig divided not only the fans but the group itself. Ahig is considered by many members of the band as their least favorite Slipknot album due to the way the studio is working. Jim was very unhappy with the producer, but a good opinion of the album itself and the process of working on it, and Mick was very unhappy with the radical leaps in style between the songs, as well as the general heterogeneity of the material. Despite this, Paul spoke very well about the album, and Joey considers it the best of the group. Immediately after Corey recorded the song Snuff, Clown and Jim decided to play him. The clown comes up with the camera on and says no one is safe, a phrase from the song Disaster Piece, after which Jim, behind Corey, blows up a huge clapper wheel. Who knows Slipknot well, probably noticed long ago that they usually take the most radio-friendly songs or more softcore remixes for singles. Therefore, when the first single was the song of the same name to the album All Hope Is Gone, practically the hardest thing in their entire discography, it caused a furor among some, and bewilderment among others. Even start speculation like Slipknot will fundamentally change their sound towards death metal. But less than a month later, the second psychosocial single was released and everything fell into place. Moreover, here Slipknot did as usual and cut out the most brutal piece for the single version of the song. In other words, after many years, that speculation still partially justified, since 2016, Joey has been playing in the international death metal band. In 2008, Slipknot surprised with their selection of songs for their concerts. Before that, with the release of the new album, the band's setlist was always radically updated with new things, but with Ahag it was a completely different story, the band always played exclusively single songs, and then only after they became singles. Except for the album of the same name, All Hope Is Gone, it was almost never played at all. This led to a very strange situation, when on tour in 2008 only one new song was played in support of the new album, Psychosocial. Much later, other single songs began to replenish the setlist. Dead Memories, Snuff and Sulphur. With the release of the next two albums, it only got worse, apart from Psychosocial with Ahig, nothing is usually played. Now it is already clear that this is probably due to the dislike of many members of the group for the album. Especially. The extended version included three more songs, Child of Burning Time, Vermilion Point. Two, Bloodstone Mix, and Edel We Die, as well as a DVD with atmospheric video, a bit of video about the studio and the most suburban place where the studio is located and the work on the visual concept of the album took place iTunes also decided to insert their 5 Copex and sold their version of the album, with one bonus track in the form of a live version of Psychosocial. A Jubilee edition came out in 2018. No bonus tracks, but with the second disc containing the 2009 concert. Concert setlist. 
By the way, 2009, 16 songs and only two of them are new. Among the bonus tracks of the extended edition, one of them is not a new song Vermilion, point. 2, Bloodstone Mix. Vermilion itself, point. 2 is a song from their previous album Vol. 3, The Subliminal Verses and her remix Vermilion, point. 2, Bloodstone Mix, was created for the soundtrack of the 2006 film Underworld 2, Evolution. However, until 2008, few people knew about the existence of this song. Among other things, Ahik has received many accusations of final retirement from new metal, which in my opinion is unjustified. Probably, the fact that there were a lot of guitar solos on the album also played a role. Well, what can I say, here it is basically impossible to please, in the past they were scolded for not knowing how to play guitar solos, and then for leaving the roots. By the way, I also disagree with the latter, yes, there was a lot of new things on Ahig, but everything that was on the first three albums was also there. As it often happens, the main distributors of nonsense in the world of music, music magazines, did not pass by Ahig. I remember seeing a big article slash review in 2008, which, of course, was more of a clickbait advertisement, and not a full review of the album. Most of all, I remember that there they assured that the song Vendetta was such a specific Ramstein. How then I laughed when I bought the album and Vendetta turned out to be absolutely anything, but infinitely far from everything that Ramstein plays. How do you like the All Hope Is Gone album?